You know, it figures that just around this, the time when like the first one of the first big games in a while comes out, that your husband has to just up and <laughs> just, just go out. Oh, I'm going out of town. It's just yeah, yeah. You got stuff to do. I'm going to California. Whoa. How about that? I know. I know. And you know, I, I would say I'd say like, oh, I but maybe we can scrape together some dough, and I could fly out there with you and. You could go do your shit all day, and then I'll just hang in the hotel, you know, maybe go down Hollywood Boulevard, mm-hmm. score some crack, whatever you do <laughs> in Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure that that's, that's what you do in Los Angeles. Is that what you imagine? That's, that's what's in your mind? Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. You, you pick up, like, whores in booty shorts on <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard. I think that's what you do. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just do that all day, and then, like, we can hang out. And he, he was kind of, like, weird for a while, like, yeah, that would be really great. And I was, I finally gave up. I was like, okay, yeah, just go to LA. I'll stay here and watch the dogs. It's cool. <laughs> but you know what? We like there was a there's an actual game that came out, Dragon's Crown, and it needs reviewing. So welcome everybody to Rage Select. I am Jeff, and I have amazing Sparkle Fandango host Allison Murphy herself with us today. And we're gonna do a review on this motherfucker. It's, it's me. Hi, hi, Sparkle Fandango fans. Do you Sparkle have a living? Do you have a name for for your fans yet? Sparklies. Uh, Sparkle fan. Sparkle Dangos. Fan. I don't know. There's gonna be like an emphasis or like I don't know. We gotta uh, we gotta figure that out. I don't. <laughs> um. Yeah, people, that's a weird one. Every, I usually just leave it up to people themselves, and then they talk amongst themselves and come up with something, and then I just call them whatever the fuck I want to. Kayla calls them sparkle puffs or something like that. Like, I don't know. She she kayla that one. Um, <laughs> well, I tell you what. Let's talk about yeah. Dragon's Crown. Dragon's, Dragon's Crown is Crown. the latest game out from Atlas and Vanillaware. And... Um, I don't, you know, I maybe it's just the fact that I've been living in a, a video games wasteland for so long, but I yeah. really like this game. I thought this game was really, really fun. Like I, yeah, like... it it looked really, it looks fun. It's a like side scrolling kind of stuff. Yeah, I technically, yeah. I guess the genre people would normally attribute to it is beat 'em up. I mean, it's like yeah. uh, like Final Fight or the. But the the easiest reference, of course, is the the old Dungeons and Dragons arcade games, the Shadow right. of Mistara and Tower of whatever french fries whatever it's called right uh, <laughs> uh but yeah it's it's basically you're side scrolling beat em up and you've got a bunch of different characters to choose from it's all completely medieval i'm sure that people who are listening to this probably know something about the game but it's a brief rundown there's a whole bunch of you basically have a series of quests and the the overall framework of the game i don't know it does something that i'm not super fond of in video games where you have like these nine different areas and you play through all nine areas and then when mm-hmm. you get done playing them, then you play through all nine areas a second time, but they're slightly changed around. Um, oh. Yeah, except they just make, they make it a lot harder. They put in new bosses. Uh, but, you know, the funny thing is this is actually the first game. This is by Vanillaware, which is this company that has a really uh, a very distinctive art style where they they have <laughs> sprites. <laughs> yes, we're gonna we'll come all the way back around to that eventually. But this is I've, I've wanted to play their games for a long time, but it seems like I'm always missing them. Like they had Odin's Fear that was on the PS2. It's right yeah. after I got a PS3, and they had a bunch of games on the Wii when I didn't have a Wii. So this has been the first one of their games that I've been able to just sit down and play all the way through. And it's um you know just graphics wise, it's it's pretty. It's real pretty. Yeah, I I'm looking right now at some of the graphics. They are pretty. Mm-hmm. You get this yeah. like, hand painted, hand painted sprites that that they animate. So it's kind of like an old. It's kind of like if um, if all game development remained, if if like Final Fight was the best video game that was ever created, and then all the current new generations of technology and stuff were all funneled into just making that one style of game look like just fantastic, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> very painterly and shaded and yeah yeah and it's also though but what i what i dig about it you know i don't know jason sometimes didn't didn't get down get done get on board with this but what i like about it as well is the fact that it's also got like a really intricate and involved it's it's basically got like a diablo style loot system where you'll 
run through the game and you'll, you know, in every quest you'll unlock these chests and it gives you certain loot and then you have to bring it back and identify it. It's better. It's an S rank. It's an A rank. And you're constantly trying to find better equipment. And it's actually right. really complicated in that fashion where you, you're not just having, like your, most of the characters in the game have a primary, like a primary weapon attack, but then you also have like you can have rings or scrolls or potions or right. You, you can have the tricked out caddy mm-hmm. with the leather interior and like cheetah fur on the ceiling. <laughs> some sweet hydros could, and some ground yeah. effects, and some spinners. Yeah. Or you could just have like a Yugo yeah. with. Like the paint chipping off of the side because you didn't wipe the gas up when you were <laughs> fueling. This is a really specific metaphor that you're making, uh, Allison. I feel like this is uh, this has happened to you before. <laughs> every time I th- every time I play games like this where they do have that kind of system, I, I just think to myself like, I wish life was like that. Mm-hmm. Like instead of you know like giving you a paycheck, your boss would be like, and here's your secret treasure chest, and you could crack it open and. You know, one out of ten times, you'd be like, fuck, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's the tricked out caddy, but <laughs> that's not the way life works. It sounds like a horrible world. It seems like like 75 or 80% of the time, you just be like, god damn it, I got this last week. So every but week, ma- I get the same thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, craft macaroni and cheese dinner. That's right. Johnson in accounting, he keeps getting all the fucking purple, the fat perps, and I'm getting all this, this just garbage E-rank nonsense. But then we just roll up on Johnson in accounting with, you know, like a frost spell. Uh huh. So you're and integrating PvP into this into this life uh, model that you're creating. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Um, I don't really think of things. Uh, I, I guess you know, like you got to make it fun, right, yeah. in your brain. And I guess that's kind of how I would get through my my work day. Would be like, okay. If everybody in this office belonged to a race in Fair Run, <laughs> what would they be? <laughs> oh man! Um, but yeah, it, it's really—I don't know. Like the, the, this game could have been real kind of junky throwaway. Like they could have just straight up made a clone of yeah. Shadows of Mistara, but they—they kind of went the extra mile to put stuff like the you know the randomized loot and then that's affected like there's a really cool system in this game where about halfway through the game when you have to go back through all these levels over again like they up the difficulty and so you have to start playing online with other people way more and it actually gets to this point where like whenever you beat a level because the levels only take 10 15 minutes to get through I mean, sometimes right. they're really difficult and you have to do them multiple times. But, you know, if you're in there and you've got people with you, you're generally going to make it through to the end. Um, but then at the end of each level, they'll have a, a thing where they're like, do you want to continue adventuring or do you want to stop adventuring? And if you continue adventuring, it takes you to a new random location and it ups the percentages on all of, like, your drop rate and how much money you get and all that stuff. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, and it actually it becomes this weird system where it's like an endurance competition of, like, how long can you play without stopping? And the longer you can play, the more of this stuff you'll build up. Um, and like I said, it's it's one of these really Japanese games that gets really weird because, <clears throat> like, after you get to this midpoint in the game and it changes like this, you get to a point where you can ha- where you can actually have like multiple equipment layouts and you need it because you're you're you know after you get through after you go through two dungeons and you've been fighting stuff like your sword will lose durability and it'll break right so you need right. like an okay. alternate lay- loadout that you can switch over to so you can keep going longer and longer and longer i think the most i ever did was like five or six and i just started to get i started to get that thing where you're like oh man i got a lot of stuff oh, i got a lot of stuff i think i need to go cash this stuff in i want to know what the stuff is man it's going to make me even stronger like yeah. uh but it's really cool in that way, and it you know the online player matching uh, it, it matches you up with people that are. I mean, it doesn't have any real rhyme or reason. Like you end up in a a, a party that has um, three of the you know they're all three of the same character in there, and then you're just like, oh hi Amazons, it's like, I guess we'll hang out with you guys today or whatever. Um, but it's actually a really cool system, and it keeps you playing. And because there aren't any voice comms in the game, you don't have to worry about, you know, some 13-year-old being like, why did you do your thing when the Minotaur procced on yeah. And, yeah. 
Ugh. It's, <laughs> like, it's like YouTube commenters. Just ugh. <laughs> but you know what? It's funny because I found that without any without any emotes or without any way to actually communicate with people, I'm starting to believe this, Allison, that communication in video games is a real shitty thing. That yeah. We, we need less communication in video games so that I don't have to listen to your bullshit opinion about Obamacare or whatever. I just want to kill the dragon. That's all I give a shit about. Or make it at least optional so that if you are playing with folks that you know, you guys can banter and have a lot of fun. But if you just want to get on there and you with random 13-year-olds who uh, are chemically retarded, <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. until a certain age, the hormones in your brain make you chemically retarded yeah and, um, hmm. and so i don't want to i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear your creative use of the american vernacular i don't i don't want to hear about it i don't want to hear you you know threaten me with threats that you could not in any lifetime achieve i just <laughs> i don't want to hear it uh and, and trust me i understand like last year fez one of the greatest multiplayer experiences of my life yeah. because the person can't fucking open their mouth and talk to you. Right. So. Or journey where you can just like, oh, like, Oh no, yeah. Journey. I'm sorry. That's what I was thinking of. Blink at each other. Yep. And then I can think to myself, that person's wishing me to have a wonderful day. Will you have a wonderful day too? Right. You don't actually, you don't actually sit there thinking to yourself, are they calling me gay or are yeah. they saying that my mom's a whore? I can't quite do it again. Do it again. I want to see if I can get this one. Yeah, yeah. I think you got to work out a code. That that is obviously that's obviously talking about my ass and right. your ass too, my friend. <laughs> um. So in in addition to all that stuff in the actual gameplay, uh, there also is an adventurers guild where you can go to pick up quests that basically ask you to go back through these levels and find little individual hidden tidbits and. Um, you trade all this stuff in. There's also a really intricate leveling up system where, well, it's not, it, I, I'm overblowing it a little bit. It's not super intricate. You level up, you get points when you level up, you spend those points on a whole bunch of different skills. So you can really customize your character to be more offensive or defensive or whatever. Like there's way too many skills in there for, I, I don't even know. Like I beat the game once and then it wants you to beat it a bit, essentially two or three more times after you get done with that. Like it gives you an opening to keep playing. Right. It just jacks the difficulty level up. Um, and I don't know if you did everything. I, maybe you could get all, all that stuff maxed out, but I don't. I don't think that's this is one of those games. I think this is a game where they want you to kind of pick what you want to do and you specialize. But it's cool because the whole thing, all of the stuff that I've been talking about, adds up to hella hella replay value like you could cool. it's one of those games where you get done playing through a level and then you're like oh i i think i just want to go back in there. i'm gonna just do one more i'm just gonna do one more see if i can get some some good loot and then you go back in there and then it's four hours later and you're just like what the f- oh god damn it yeah so, <laughs> um, well um are there any kind of story elements or do you develop the characters any farther besides what they look like and what they're carrying? Um, not really. I mean, when I beat the game, there was a story specific ending for the character that I chose, but it was just one piece of art with a voiceover. Uh, there is kind of a, there is a, a narrative, but it's, it's like they split the difference between it's not, you know, you're not talking about mass effect or, or something epic, like a dragon age or something here. It's basically right. enough of a, a storyline to push you from one area to the next. But they, I think they realize that most people who are going to be really into this game are going to be playing it over and over and over and over again. So they don't want to listen to the, the same thing over and over and over and over right. again. Uh, but actually, speaking of listening to the same thing, there is one, one, of, the, one of the knocks I got I to gotta give against Dragon's Crown is that <laughs> there's like this little hub area that you go to that has the stores and you leave from there. And there's a narrator in the game that, that recaps what you're doing. Like, he tells you the story. And, like, if we exit the shop, he'll be like, the king has asked you to go to the Forbidden Forest to find a locket of macaroni. Um, but every single time that you come back to that screen, like, if you're like, okay, well, I need to go 
go to the temple. I need to go to the item shop. I need to go to the sage shop. You know, I need to go to the bar to get a party together. Every time you exit, he starts saying that same thing over again. And it's just like, oh, dude, seriously, you've got to shut the fuck up. I know. I know where I'm supposed to be going right now, especially later on in the game when you're just futzing around or you're grinding for levels. And every time you come back to town, he's like, only because you have these nine gems you have to get. And he keeps saying, only eight more gems left to get. You go, you go, only eight more gems. Only eight more. I'm just like, oh, where is the button to make you stop saying that shit, my friend? Because I'm going to find you in this game and throttle you. Right. Um, okay. So uh, repeating phrases is bad. Uh, well, it's it's one of those things where eventually you just learn to tune it out. But it would be nice if they had taken into... I mean, I understand why they're doing it. Because you can get sidetracked so easily in this game that every time you come back there, the game is reminding you, like, hey, this is what you need to do. I just wish that they would say it one time and then there was maybe a little button on the screen that was like, hey, do you need to know what you need to do? Hit this button and he'll come back on and say it all over again. Right. Uh, or even like a traditional quest log where you can look it up if you forget. Otherwise, it's not interfering. Mm -hmm. Which they actually have that. It's kind of stripped down. But for the side quests that you get, there is a quest log that shows you what you've been asked to do, essentially. Um, but... For some reason, the main story, the game just pushes the main story up in your fa up in your grill, and it's like it gets a little irritating after a while. But I don't know. That's not a huge thing. I mean, you know, it's a little bit of an irritation, but it's not like I wasn't, you know, I didn't take the game out and break it in half or anything. Okay, okay. But uh, I tell you what, let's 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 talk about the the elephant in the room for Dragon's Crown. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's. Let, I think it's boobs. It's it's. It's not just boobs. There's a lot of there's a like I don't know. There's a lot of boobs. If you play as the sorceress, it's very much boobs. If you play as the Amazon, it's very much ass. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I looked at I looked at the some of the images from the game and I was like, shit. Yeah. That is like a crumb cartoon, but like in a different style. Yeah. So, uh, Vanillaware, this is. All right, I want to. We're gonna. I'm gonna dance around this as much as possible. Allison, feel free to to okay. jump in here whenever you you feel like you have something you need to say about this. Because I have boobs, yeah. right? Well, okay. you know, as as our official boob correspondent, yeah. I, but no, <laughs> this is Allison Levy here with the news on boobs. <laughs> news on boobs. I like it. Um, but okay, so in the past, Vanillaware has like. Their art design, th this the guy that does the art design for this stuff, and the, the is like, I can't remember his name, but he's, he does the the, the art design. French, it's Daniel Ravino or something like that. Oh no, it's uh, jo George uh, Camatani, I believe. Oh, it's okay. at the artist. Um, so the previous games that this these guys have made, Grim Grimoire, Odin Sphere, Muramasa, um, you know, I looked up the art for these games. And, like, this is not all that much different than the pre than, a, than a lot of the previous games this guy has made. They're the previous art style okay. and a lot of the previous games. It is different. It is like they've pushed it. If I, had to, if I had to describe it, it would be like, in the previous games, it was just straight up, like, anime, you know? Like, right. There are girls with big boobs in there and kimonos and little cat ears or whatever. Like Muramasa, the female protagonist, she shows a lot of leg throughout the entire game. But here it's like they really they really cranked that meter all the way up to eleven when they were doing the character designs here in the okay. game. So the sorceress is you know, her top, her her boobs, they're stupid big. And when you're playing the game, they're just blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, they're all all over the place. The Amazon, the way that she walks, it's like she doesn't have any spine or pelvis bones because she she does like that, you know, where you put one foot in front of the other one, that sexy lady walk or whatever, and she's yeah, got this sexy lady walk, huge muscular buttocks that are just they're pointed at the screen the entire time. Like I don't know how she's walking in a straight line because her butt is pointed towards the front of the screen. That's uh, a little weird. That's a little weird. It's a little strange. Now, I mean, there are three female characters and three male characters. The elf in here, though, not really much to say. She's just a skinny little girl. She's right. got clothes on and all of the stuff. The dudes on the other, the other side, you know, you've got the warlock, who is pretty much just wearing Gandalf junk. You've got the knight, who is 
I mean, you know, he's a little Armor. ridiculous in his proportions. Like, if if I had a chest like that, I wouldn't be able to stand up straight because I keep falling over because my teeny tiny legs were so small. But he is right. covered head to toe in armor. And then you have the dwarf who is all muscles and junk out in in the world. And uh, I don't know. Like, I guess I've heard some people saying that, like, I there was somebody that I was reading that said that they weren't super offended by some of this stuff because everything in this game is ridiculous like the right. the dragons and the ogres and there's a there's a genie with an eight pack you know at one point in the game and like everything is is real dramatically overblown and while i was playing the game like all i could really think of was that to me it was less like to me it felt less like like sleazy exploitation and more like somebody had tried to take like Frank Frazetta and Boris Vallejo kind of stuff and make it into a video game. Like it kind of felt to me on par with that, where it was like, you've got this weird hypersexual um, fantasy type of trappings going on. And I could see why people would be a little bit like, yeah, that's pretty gross. But I guess the other thing, for, at least for me, is the fact that I, you know, it's not like I turned this game on and was like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> sexy mama. You know, I was just like, at a certain... You didn't go into the spank bank? You weren't just like, <laughs> later on, like, oh, yeah, lady, with no. the leg tattoo. No. Let <laughs> me see that booty bounce. <laughs> no. You got that, that monkey riding on the back of that donkey. <laughs> Monkey ride on the. I don't think I've ever heard that one. Back before. it up. I've never heard that one before. But yeah, I mean, and the other thing is that at a certain point, I mean, I mean, even from the very beginning of the game, it was the sort of thing where like I'm more concerned with playing the game and looking out for what's going on on the screen with explosions. That if you ask my opinion, it seems a little gratuitous. And if, if they came and asked me before they made the game, I would have been like. I don't know, maybe keep the giant boobs, but not have them just ready to fall out of her top at any moment. And, you know, maybe give the Amazon some pants or I don't care. Put them all in armor for all the for all I care. At a certain point, it, to me, it just becomes more about is the game fun than than getting hung up on this stuff. And I, you know, I don't know. I, I understand why people like I said, I understand why people are upset. But I, what did what did you think? You you got to take a look. Did you see the game in, in action or did you just look at the the art for it? I just looked at the art for it and, you know, I, I, I talked to um, a friend who uh, writes for Kotaku, mm -hmm. uh, Toshi, um, about another game out of Japan because that, you know, geez, let's go ahead and name a big offender there. OK, you're the you're the biggest offender. Uh huh. Um, what game? Oh shit! What was it? It was like, uh, it was for the DS, and it was like something, something four. Okay. And it had a marketplace where you could go in, and if you fondled the ladies with your DS, they'd drop bigger loot for you, or they'd give you deals or whatever. So Sh Shin Megami Tensei four. Yeah. Duh. No, I want to say that it's something with a V, but okay. whatever. Okay. Anyway. So here's the situation. You go into the marketplace and you grab their boobs or you fondle their butt and then the hearts appear and then they make little cute noises and then they give you more stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing was like, oh, and look how sexy they're dressed. And to me, that wasn't really the problem. Like, yeah. yes, they were dressed sexy. You could see that they had boobs because they were girls. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem there was it was like a little more like sex trade kind of icky like ew that was a little gross um more than the fact that they have boobs yeah and so i i always say like there's nothing wrong with looking at like exaggerating the female form mm -hmm. because those are the yummy bits and you want to look at the yummy bits and you're like yay boobies um that doesn't bother me i just wish that they'd realize that girls also play video games and let's start doing the same thing to the dudes. Mm -hmm. Let's just have games with like half naked dudes and big wiener packages just hanging out there because mm -hmm. that's all fair. <laughs> let's just let's just get fair. Like I, I want a dude's butt like in my video games. Well, let me I mean, this is something that that I mean, you know, this is a safe place. So I'm going to feel free okay. to ask you. 
I mean, Kuna's what do you safety? What do you think about? I mean, what do you think about? Because a lot of people, I think, in this discussion, have pointed to the the dwarf character as like the fact that this is this dude with no shirt on, just giant pecs and six pack and junk all hanging out. Like, do you feel that that in any way kind of gets in that position, or does it, does it need to be monster dongs? I guess is the question. <laughs> just a giant penis just by itself just like a giant penis with some eyeballs and a sword that's okay. that's, that's what you want to play. just anthropomorphize dildo that just runs a game i got this this mental image of this game but instead of characters it's just it's a it's a dong it's some boobs it's a butt and uh you know there might be a, a, a like a fleshlight yeah exactly just these walking fleshlight giant walking genitalia with fantasy swords beating shit up <laughs> and just like you know it would, be, it would be kind of rubbery it would kind of flomp around a little bit um unless it you know it was in the heat of battle and then it would quit flomping of course it would be fully erect at that point in time <laughs> but, um um no, okay, so that's so that's why this game doesn't really bother me because uh, you know as bad as some of the other ones because um, the, well the genie has an eight pack yeah well, like you said um, plus it's I mean it's also worth noting to a certain degree that while while the I mean you know and I'm like I said I'm not trying to get into this gender politics thing is something I don't even have my own thoughts worked out on yet but like. The other thing about this is that the, the, the at least in the main characters that the you know the sorceress and the um the Amazon is they're also both ass kicking characters you know they're not being stolen away and you've got to rescue them or anything like they start the game and they're you know the sorceress blowing the screen up with fire and the Valkyrie is you know she's doing the spins and flips and she's got a giant axe and she's beating the shit out of people so they're you know. I don't know. I don't it's know. It's not like they're shrinking violets and they need rescuing. Right. They now, are the people who are in control also. Now, I will say that there are that there are a few places where and these were not playable characters, but there are a few places in the game where there were a few ladies that were a little bit that where it was just kind of like, I was playing the game and I was just kind of like, "Oh, come on, man. That's just a that's a that's a little bit much." But right. you know, these are characters on lo- on essentially loading screens that you kind of whiz by. Um, the one in particular is this warrior monk. Anybody who's played the game knows what I'm talking about. But, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like most people who know what this game is, they're either not going to care or they are going to care. And I think it's just kind of up to you. I don't necessarily think that this is the game to make the. This is not the. I don't think this is the game to take the stand about like this is disgusting. Nobody should buy it. Ah, you know. There's... Right, and geek culture right now, it's kind of. Uh, having some problems, like you say, you don't have all the gender politics worked out in your brains, and I think in the culture right now is having some problems with working that out within the culture. Do we like sexy ladies, or do we think that they're bad, or do we think that they're automatically fake, or do they like? Yeah, if a girl shows up at con and she's built like Jessica Rabbit, which guess what? Some ladies are just built that way. They're hot and. Uh, you know, she's wearing a thing and everybody's like, ooh, but we're not going to take her seriously because, you know, she looks like a video game character. Right. Um, so I think internally in the culture, people are going through that stuff, too. I think that, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me so much to have, like, boobs. Okay, so the sorceress is boobs. Let's face it. Where are her nipples? Like, where are they? It's like... <laughs> She's not actually a mammal because right. there's no out point for the the purpose of boobs, Jeff. I don't know if you know this. They they feed babies. What? Babies. I know. I, I hate know. babies. Like, babies, they make babies come out of one area and then they feed them with another. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so where are her nipples? Well, I guess though, but if you've got to have like, it's like we don't want to show like a naked breast, but like, how much can we get out there? Right. Well, this is this is this is it. This is the answer to that question. This is pretty much how much you can get out there without straight this is up. It. Yeah. This is we, someone discovered it. Mm-hmm. How many licks does it take to get to the center, which is real pop? Right. <laughs> the uh, world just found out. So, all right. Well, that's so. There's that. There's a couple other things real fast. This game does have a really, really irritating 
um, system in it where you have to use the right stick to move this finger pointer around the screen and click on stuff on the screen. It I re- hate that. Yeah, it really feels like it's more like this was. It, to honestly, the whole thing just feels like it was more originally a Wii game than it got ported over to the PS3 because uh, it's on the PS Vita as well, and I hear it works really well with the touch screen on the Vita where you just go boop, 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 and then you get sure. the treasure. Um, I think like it's really irritating when you're when you're when you're playing the game. Also, um, I had the game lock up on me a few times, uh, like when I was trying to, especially. And there was one time; it's only happening one time where it actually happened in the transition from one stage to another in multiplayer. So I lost everything that I had done in that session. Um, it didn't happen all the time, but it happened a couple of times. So. Mm. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it's the sort of game where if you're the sort of game player who is not real into, if you're not the sort of person who can think about playing a game and just playing the same part of a game over and over and over again, and that doesn't sound fun to you, this is this is not for you in any way straight at all. Don't yeah. get away. And there are folks out there like that. Yeah. And- to some extent, I mean, I really enjoy this kind of game, the action adventure sort of game. So this actually looks, this looks like a really cool game, and I think I want to try to play it. Um, but what I'm into games for mostly is like exploration. So that is kind of a tick in my con column. Yeah, but it's, it still looks like a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and it. It really is. It. I only um, the the final boss was a little bit of a stumbling block for me because you can't bring in other people with you because that would make it a little bit uh, easier. So I'm gonna do some okay. work to get over there. You also can kind of break the game in certain ways. Like you can create these NPC characters that just wander around with you, and they're some of them are based on people that you have played the game with. So if you have a level fifty six like character that you've resurrected that'll walk around and hang out with you and, and fight for you as a computer control and then you restart the game with like a level one character and you bring that person with you they just destroy the first part of the game they just fuck it up to no end Um, right but you know considering that you've got six different characters you got um you know call it 18 stages you got a lot of loot grinding you got uh difficult you know the easy uh difficulty level only goes up to level 35 level 65 on hard and then inferno i believe goes up to level 99 there's a hell of a lot of game here for what I'm pretty sure is about fifty bucks, I'm gonna actually look that up right now so that I'm not um, I'm not steering you guys wrong. But <clears throat> um, it's a hell of a lot of game for fifty bucks. Um, yeah, fifty bucks on the PlayStation Three. It is a PS3 exclusive title, so unfortunately now it's not on the 360. But uh, I give it four out of five because I feel like it's got some some okay. some flaws and it's got a few things that would probably you know, and it can get repetitive, but for what it is, I think it's well worth the price and it's well worth the time. And it's beautiful. And it's really pretty. I mean, you yeah. know, once you get past, if you, you go, I mean, like the first time that Jason and I were playing this game and we went into the, we went into the, the, the item shop and the woman there is literally like, she's towering above you and you're just looking right up into her chest. And it's just like, whoa, you guys. I think I'm, I, you need to hire me. I'll come over there. I am going to be your new subtlety consultant. And we're going right. to you know, <laughs> chill this shit out just a little bit. I think everybody will be happy. Nice, nice. I'm going to recommend you for that job. If you need a reference, hit me up. Subtlety consultant. Subtlety consultant. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 